This portion of the news brought to you by ESSO, a proud sponsor of the ESSO Junior Junkanoo Parade. Well, the cost of electricity in the Bahamas is one of the highest in the region, and in an effort to help cut costs to consumers, BC Chairman Leslie Miller has introduced a holiday reconnection drive. It's expected to assist thousands of Bahamian families in keeping their electricity on throughout the holidays. LaDon Davis has more on the reconnection drive. How much money can you say that you've, you've, you've been owed I'm in BC? Child, almost $800. $800? Wow, yeah. how, did, how did your bill get all the way up there? Well, big family. Brittany Evans is one of 5,000 BC consumers struggling to pay her monthly bills, especially during the holiday season. However, she says this kind gesture by BC to assist families in need could not have come at a better time. In time for the Christmas holidays, we thought we'd introduce a similar initiative to provide to those who were living without this most basic necessity, electricity. Initially, customers were required to pay 25% of their overdue balances and pay the remainder over a six month period. Realizing the extent to which so many people were hurting, we adjusted our program slightly. Instead, we allowed customers to pay just 20% of the balance and gave them an entire year to pay off the balance of their rent. Back in October, consumers received a reduction in fuel surcharge on their monthly bills. And BEC officials are optimistic that this new initiative will assist as many Bahamians as possible to maintain their standard of living. Now, if you have not yet paid 20% down on your BEC bill, you have until January 31st to do so. LaDon Davis, ZNS Network News. A major government agency is expanding its reach over in the nation's second city. The Deputy Prime Minister, along with other officials, explained that the project is not only helping to improve the standard of living for residents, but is also helping to stem the tide of crime in that community. Joan Davis Roll has a story. Someone who give us a feeling that we belong. The Deputy Prime Minister leading a delegation into the Colony Club area to view firsthand a major redevelopment project underway by Urban Renewal 2.0 on Grand Bahama. This significant undertaking, which includes the reconstruction of several roofs and a massive cleanup exercise, is a part of Urban Renewal's small home repair initiative. Now, months after the project began, residents say relief has come and they are singing the praises of the government. The rain always threw my house in the mosquito bite me all the time because the rain is soaking the fly. It can never keep it up as long as it rain. The place is wet. This is the first time and in many years that I've seen no rain, rain inside the house for me, the building isn't finished. But I mean, I, I, that's, 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 a, that's a big step for me, you know. And I, I, I'm thankful, like I say again, to the government. I see a lot of people get their roof, who are holes in the roof for years, you know, because you know there's a lot of flat roof around here. So it's holding a lot of water, so it's good to see they get a little piece of A now, you know, to let the water drain. We are uh, been in the struggle for many, many years trying to get out the slum, you know. And we thank for the government to come through because it was, it's an honor to see, you know, the Deputy Prime Minister to come through. The minister responsible for works on urban development, the Honorable Philip Brave Davis, says the project is a systematic and strategic approach that should improve the standard of living for many. Now, there's no doubt that um, a person's surroundings really dictate their own conduct and behavior. If you live in squalor, you obviously sometimes act in, like you living in squalor and so I'm happy to see I was here about a year and a half ago when uh, Michelle and the minister walked me around here and I saw the dilapidated state of these properties and they've taken the right approach first of all they're putting roof over the heads and then they're going in and help uh, to to with the interior works as well so we are happy to be a part of this and I'm happy and I'd like to thank the corporate sponsors here in Grand Bahama who has joined hands with uh, our program. The project, which is nearing completion, is already proving to yield substantial benefits. This according to the local deputy director of Urban Renewal, Michelle Rackley, and the Minister for Grand Bahama and Member of Parliament for Pine Ridge, the Honorable Dr. Michael Darbo. When we came, um, we were hearing statements like, you're like everybody else coming and nothing will happen. So we had a rough beginning, but today, because of the work they have seen, it made it easy, it made people more comfortable. And you know, we can come into this area at any time. It's easy to sit on the fence and criticize, but when you come in and you lend that assistance, then you see what it is. We know that uh, over the last four to five months, we have seen a reduction in crime in this particular area. And that is proving to be one of the major beneficial effects of urban renewal on Grand Bahama. Joan Davis-Roll, Saturday Network News. 
Immigration officials are now processing another group of illegal Haitian migrants. The group of 136 was found on a wooden sloop off Stanyo Key in the Exuma chain on Christmas Day. Immigration Director William Pratt tells ZNS News that the sloop was towed into Stanyo Key and the group was housed in the schoolhouse overnight. The migrants have since been flown to the capital where they are now being processed at the detention center. Pratt says the goal is to have this recent group repatriated by Tuesday. There's presently 368 illegal migrants at the detention center, 296 of whom are Haitian nationals. Well, coming up in sports, a giant in the sports broadcasting industry remembered. This is First at Six.